All right, welcome back to Binary Adventure. And in this video, we are going to be putting this inside of the malware analysis playlist. So we're taking a little bit of a break from the x86 in depth just for this video here. Um, we're still going to have another one of those episodes coming up next weekend on schedule as usual. But I'm doing another little in-between video. And it is on this tool. Um, it's a PE analysis program or a portable executable parsing program. It's called AdLice PE Viewer, and the version is 2.0.3.0. Um, and this tool, I've never, I never heard of it before. I've never seen it anywhere before. But a colleague stumbled upon it today, and he wanted me to check it out. And I have kind of just been blown away because it's a really, really good tool for malware analysis and for um, general um, PE file reconnaissance. And I mean, it's it's kind of similar to PE Studio. There's so many out there. There's there's like PE View, PE Viewer, PE Studio, Puppy, PPEE. Um, you know, many of which you've probably seen on this channel before, or read in one of my blog posts about. There's there's like CFF Explorer, and um, some of those other ones are are still pretty good at at niche things. Um, so, for example, PE Bear, I still consider to be the most powerful for power users for, you know, technical usage where you need to modify stuff in the file and things like that. And also, another good one is uh, Karsten Hans. I forget the name of it, but it is it uses Java, and it actually creates um, a visual depiction of the entropy in the file and I feel really bad that I forgot the name of it but anyway so there's a lot of there's a lot of PE parsing programs out there but I never seen this one before and nobody's ever really talked about it no other malware analyst that I know of has really talked about this thing but according to the developer it's used by a lot of antivirus companies so um, that being said we're gonna we're gonna do a little uh, walkthrough of this tool and see just why I'm praising it so much and what type of information is at your disposal. So when you first open up the the tool, you basically get this right here, except no, nothing's filled out. And then you basically you have the option to come over here. And so this is all of the programs that are loaded in memory that the tool found with their PIDs, and whether or not they're 64 or 32 bit, which that in and of itself is already really, really cool. Because even just that information, like whether or not the the bitness is 32 or 64 is not something that's immediately visible, even in like Process Explorer as far as I'm concerned. You might be able to set it to be like that, but this was default like that. And what's cool is the second you just click on any of these processes, it starts to analyze the process and it immediately shows you the modules that are loaded and it will there's like a little um, watch icon that goes it spins right here and and as it's spinning it's analyzing and moving things around and so as you can see so I don't take too long in this video I've already analyzed this one that's why I'm not clicking elsewhere because I don't want to trigger a reanalysis but it only takes about a minute so we're looking at 64-bit CC cleaner. It ran it through virus total. It's telling us we got 0 out of 67 hits. If we click this button right here, it'll take us to the virus total um, listing. And then you can click submit again. It will submit the file to virus total for you. And then um, we get the PID. We get the parent process. We get the creation time of the process. We get the command line arguments when the process was run. We get all the hashes that we could need, possibly. Um, we get the file size and metadata information, whether or not the file is read-only. We get products, version, company. We get um, whether or not there's a digital signature. And this is all just one tab here. Um, and we also get a, a malicious score, which, honestly, these scores are never really that great in any tool. But they do try to do that, too. Um, and let me see what happens if I click on a module. I'm not sure if there's any real purpose of this. So it is taking some load time here, as you can see. Um, and right now, the UI is sort of unresponsive. So that is a factor here. It's not really that 
slow. At least it wasn't when I was looking at it before the video, of course. But right now, it looks like it's taking some time to do whatever it is. I don't know if it's if it's the image tab or if it's the fact that I clicked on the module. But it is taking a while to load. So if it doesn't finish up qu quickly, I might have to cut this part out of the video. Um, let me click on virus total. So we don't have any hits, so it doesn't show any hits. Um, let me show indicators. Oh, I see. So this is basically the criteria that the score is based off of. However, okay, there we go. So the malicious score actually got dropped. So I'm guessing that it, w it was not finished analyzing this file or it was querying something because it, it was at like 55 earlier. And now it looks like it's a lot more accurate down at 17. So these are all the, the criteria as to why it's giving it a 17 which is pretty cool. I like that it has its own dedicated area for that. Um, memory, I'm not really sure why that's empty. Earlier, it seemed like it had mapped out all the memory for me. Oh, maybe it's because it's from NTDLL. That could be it. That's exactly what it is. Okay, so it looks like when you click a DLL file over here, that it will actually analyze that file that's in memory. So what happened was, is we went to NTDLL, and that's why the malicious score dropped. So there you go. Learn something new about this tool. So that's pretty cool. So if you click on any of these modules, it analyzes the in-memory version of it, and it hashes the in-memory version of it, and it submits that uh, to VirusTotal and sees if the in-memory version is has any flags on it. So back to CC Cleaner regular here. Um, so virus total's got zero on it. So here we got a lot more indicators, but obviously just because something has BMP, JPEG, and AVI and all that kind of stuff doesn't automatically make it malicious. Same with all these functions here. Um, so let's go into memory um, or hex strings since memory doesn't seem to be cooperating. So you got like a hex editor kind of thing here. It looks like it might just be a hex viewer. You can right click, you can dump this thing out which is pretty neat you can jump to certain areas of the file it's pretty cool because remember this is the in memory because we have the memory option checked here and um, the other thing i really like is you can hit scan and you can do a strings minimum length of 10 string analysis and um and it will pull out file names registry urls etc so when you hit scan it does take a minute but it pulls out it does a really good job of pulling strings out i was really surprised on that one See, it pulled out tons of strings. And then what's cool is you can filter here. So it's going to show you all just all the URLs. So if this was some malware, perhaps there would be some server information there. Um, it filters out GUIDs, which is really cool. So we could like Google those GUIDs. Um, registry information. So that is really, really useful to be built in to one of these types of tools. Um, and then it has a little disassembler. I don't ever really use these built-in disassemblers since I use IDA Pro and X64 DBG and all that. But if you wanted a disassembler, we got one. Um, oh, and then we have our MZ header, which is really cool as well. So um, a lot of times either the MZ header won't be displayed in, in these types of tools unless they're more advanced. Or they will be displayed, but they'll have a bunch of sort of sugar-coated names for all these different members. But I like this one because it just shows you a no BS, what every single one of these members is, and that's it. And it goes by name. So if you know if you know the data structure, MZ header really well, then you'll understand everything here really nicely. And it, it pulls out the ASCII, it, it pulls out the um, bytes and everything from there. And then here's our PE header. As you can see, it displays whether or not uh, data execution prevention is on, whether or not it's relocatable. Um, lots of information at your fingertips in this tool. Whether or not it's a .NET assembly, 64 or 32 bits. Type of machine that's made for. So it just it parses out the header really nicely, basically. Um, and then PE sections overlay. I'm not really sure why this is blank, but it could be because it's the in-memory version. 
In fact, I would I would argue that's probably why image wasn't working because maybe image was is for the disk image only. And we're looking at an in memory version right now. This is pretty cool. So this is the imports and exports tables. So you could look at what functions are imported and see what address they're at. PE debug, I don't know. Maybe it has something useful for disk image. Oh, and then it has a resource viewer, which is really cool as well. So instead of having to use resource hacker, you can actually, and you can scan the resources on virus total. You get their hashes and you can of course, right click and dump the resources as well. So you don't have to use resource hacker as a separate tool for this, which is really neat. And then it has other version information and it's supposed to have digital signature information as well. I'm not sure what's going on with digital signature information because it doesn't look like it's here, even though it said that it was signed, I believe. It said digital signature signed peer form LTT catalog. It could be because it's signed on disk. So anyway, that was a little bit of a tour here. Let's let's click disk image and see what happens now. And just see if we get anything else. So it's claiming that the file is packed by upolyx. I'm not sure if that's true. It has a PDB path. Okay, here we go. So now that we are looking at the disk image, we do have the digital signature information. Wow, this is really cool. So it displays the cert chain here. So it's basically like doing a sig check 64 on this. Um, see if anything else has changed. Okay, code view. So here, here's like some, oh, okay. So this is the PDB file used for debugging. That's what the PE debug tab's for. And then here we go. This is our sections and our overlay. That's pretty neat. Let's look at our image tab. Nothing here still, so. So yeah, that's pretty much the tool. Highly recommended. It's it's just the only reason why this is good is just because it condenses more information into one tool. So you don't have to open up two or three tools. And it's very thorough. And so far it seems to be working pretty well. So I'll post an update if I have any problems with it. But so far, Adlias, good job. Thank you for the tool. And thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I hope you found this helpful.